Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's Trisha. Today I thought I'd share some tips on using layering stencils that have been so popular lately and also share how I've been using the different type of blending tools that are on the market today. So this is the project that I created. This is using the Flower Bunch stencil from All to New and there have been lots of videos um, showing how this stencil comes together and it is just gorgeous. Uh, but I wanted to just kind of share my process and talk a little bit about some things I've learned along the way. So here is that layered stencil and a quick look at the back of the packaging where it shows you um, what the finished product will look like. And uh, there are four pieces to this stencil that come in the packaging. And I have gone ahead and labeled them with a Sharpie in the upper right hand corner just so I kind of keep track of which ones to do first. So you can see those top two have some of the greenery and foliage, then the bottom two get into the florals, and then there's those little, um, I don't know, they look like pine cone shaped flowers. Um, I am working in a bullet journal today, but this applies, you know, these tips apply to whatever surface you're working on, whether you're in on a planner page or working on a card on some cardstock, it's all the same. I did start out by putting a little bit of pixie spray on the back of my stencils. That's my first tip. I really love how it holds down all of the little intricate detailed pieces of the stencil. Um, and then when I am starting in a larger area, I, I typically like to cover larger areas with these blending foams. So this is a blending applicator and it has a domed foam on it. But then I like to go in and add some details with these detail blending brushes from All to New. So I'm sure you guys are familiar, there's all kinds of blending brushes on the market. There are the handle style ones that um, have the long skinny handle and the bristles, there's foams, there's fingertip style. These long ones that are like kind of like a paintbrush the way you hold them. I love to take them from the edge of my stencil and sort of whisk the ink out onto the stenciled area so you get a little bit of a gradient effect. It's almost like if you color with Copic markers and you're flicking out from the edge and getting a little shadow. They are also great for a lot of other things like getting into tiny detailed areas. So I'm moving on to the second layer of the stencil here. It's super easy to line up. And I, I will put all the colors that I used down in the description box below. I think I started with Misty Moore. I'm using that whole set. So I will put those down in the um, description box. And I'm just showing you the difference between these two styles of blending brushes. The first one I used was that domed foam. And the second is more of a bristle style blending brush from all to new. So this is a little, you know, bigger than the detailed brushes, but it's still a nice handheld smaller brush. So it's, um, it's easy to get into real tight spots. I feel like those little bristles really work their way into the little, um, detailed areas, those little open nooks and crannies better than the foam does. And I also find sometimes that the foam can snag on the stencil, so you have to be a little careful that you're not damaging your stencil and use a lighter hand with the foam. Um, coming back to these really fine detail brushes, these have a bristle on the tip. Again, these are newer from All to New, and um, I I love them for getting into tight spaces. It helps because you don't have to mask off if you have adjacent areas in your stencil, but it also makes it really easy to, um, to flick in some color from the edge. I use just an absorbing cloth to wipe off my stencil. I am very gentle when I do that and I dab a lot more than I rub around because I'm trying not to snag those little intricate details so that they all hold their shape. If you're new to my channel, I'll just take a break right here and ask that you subscribe and hit that notification button to be alerted when I post new content. I would love to have you come back and visit me again. So I'm continuing along with the darkest color in this set and I am using again the Altenew blending brush, the small size. 
and that allows me to tap in some color into the finest areas. I, again, I love how the bristles find their way in and deposit color in those smallest areas. I did go over the edge just a tiny bit, but that's okay. I can use a little sand eraser to uh, clean up my mistake. But look at all the detail. Not only do we have the three layers of the stencil in that background foliage, but we also have a little variation because we use that um, handheld detail brush to, uh, to flick in some color from the edges so it, does, so it never looks flat. So it just can step it up yet another notch. So that completes the background foliage and now we move on to the florals and those nest right inside that background area. Now because these are big open spaces, I wanna use my larger brush and I'm gonna mask off the edge so that I don't get any spillover. So I'm going back to my foam applicator. I just feel that that's the quickest way for me to get color down if I have a large area and I don't have um, uh, particularly intricate little pieces of stencil that I'm worried about snagging. So again, I, I do feel that there are uses and pros and cons for all of these different types of blending brushes, which is why I have so many different kinds <laughs> and reach for all of them, honestly. So this layer, the, or the, excuse me, this, these flowers, they do have layers that add detail on the inside of the flowers, but nothing that adds any detail or extra color to the tips of those petals. So I'm going back to that trick again where I'm grabbing my little detail blender brush from all to new and I am holding the brush at a little bit of an angle. The tip of these is already angled to begin with, but I'm kind of holding it so the bristles are, I don't know, maybe a 45 degree angle coming in at the side. And if I start on the stencil and flick my way into the interior of the flower, I just get a really nice subtle edging on those flowers. And I guess I was sort of trying to mimic the look that I get when I color with Copics or, or something else, colored pencils, where I, I give a little bit of shadowing on the very edge. So again, it's just a way to add an extra detail to your stenciled image and just bring them up that extra notch. So I'm going back to the next layer of the stencils and this will create the detail on the interior of the flowers where the, where the petals come into the center and create some shadowing. And for this, because this is finer detail, I'm back to the small Altenew blending brushes. Again, as I mentioned, I will link all of the colors that I used in the description box below. I think that I started with um, blush and then I'm moving to rouge and I will add some coral berry. I think that's my color combination here. So on this layer you can see I added the rouge throughout the entire stencil but then I'm putting a little bit of darker color right in the middle of that stencil opening before I pull the stencil off. So again I get some variation. So this whole the whole layer isn't a flat layer, it has some color variation. And now the third stencil layer, I'm gonna go in with an even uh, darker application of that coral berry. And since it's so tiny and has such fine openings, I am just sticking with that detailed blender brush to tap in that color. And that'll give me the darkest depth of color at the center of those petals. So now I've moved on to the next stencil which has, or the next stencil layer, which has the centers of the flower. I guess this is still sort of part of the petal layers where it meets the centers. But I'm putting yet a dark, darker application there. And then we will move on to the centers. So for the centers, I believe I am using some crimson, tapping that in with a detailed blender brush. And so you can see how it looks there. And then I'm going to replace the exact same stencil layer and use the velvet, which is a shade darker, 
and just flick in from the edges and just create a little shadowing around the edge of my flower center. Excuse my head as it gets in the way. I was trying to work in these fine areas. But I really thought that added an extra pop. So there's how it was before, and then that's how it is when I add the crimson. I just wanted to show you kind of side by side. So the last part of this floral composition are these two, I don't even know what kind of flowers these are, you guys, like they look like pine cones to me, but I know they're floral, <laughs> but they're so pretty. Um, so they only have the two layers. So I started with a real pale wash of yellow over the entire thing, and then I'm using that same trick where I'm taking the detailed brush and I'm just flicking in color along the bottom edge at the base of these and a little kind of a little on the sides too to make them look more rounded and put a little darker color there so they're not so flat. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the second layer. So I think I started with the uh, buttercream, then went to the warm sunshine. And now for this next stencil layer, I will add caramel toffee all over the entire stencil opening. And then I will accent it along the bottom with the paper bag ink. So I've just finished the caramel toffee, I'm pulling out paper bag, and I will tap that in along the bottom for some extra depth and shading. So even within your stencil layers, you can create variation in color. I sound like a broken record, sorry I'm repeating myself, but that's the point I was hoping to get across during this video. So I just, first of all, I have been in love with this, this um, stencil set since the first time I saw it and I finally got my hands on it and I have just been having so much fun with it. <clears throat> it is beautiful to do it very simply but then to take use these um, different blending brushes to take it up a notch is just extra fun. So I thought that I would add some stripes behind my flowers and that would give me an opportunity to show you um, ideas for how to use these masks. So these mask stencils also come in the set and you can see over there on the left, they're clear, but they, I think you can see them. They are um, the positive parts of the image um, before the, before the um, stencils were cut out. And so you can use them to mask off your area, your stenciled area and create a background. So I'm using long strips of post-it tape to both hold my stencil masks in place and also to create a stripe going up from behind my flowers to the top of the page. And I'm just using colors that I've already used in my floral composition, so I'm doing the warm sunshine. I started out with my foam blender just to swipe some color on, but then to really get into that tight spot next to the flowers, I used my little brush applicator. And then I'm lining up the leaves at the bottom of the cluster so that I can continue my stripe down from the bottom of our stenciled image all the way out to the bottom of the page. And I don't need to cover the entire image. I only need to sort of identify where I'm going to overlap so that I make sure that I'm protecting that stencil design. Here I'm creating another stripe and I'm going to go in with the rouge ink. I think this is rouge. And create a stripe from the top of my image to the top of the page. And then here you can see there's one little area that isn't masked, but it's okay because I'm not bringing my um, blending brush up that high. All I need to do is mask the edge. When I peel these off, you can start to get a look at that stripe design that's going to um, come out from behind our flowers. So I'm moving my two long pieces of post-it tape over just a little bit and I'm going to use the coral berry ink and do a nice light application of that. And again, I've just masked off the bottom of my floral cluster. I've got a tiny little area that I couldn't quite reach, so again, grab my detail brush. That's why I feel like I've got to have all these different kinds of blending brushes. And then I'm going to um, connect 
my stripe or continue my stripe I should say from the top of my arrangement to the top of my page. So I hope that makes sense and gives you ideas for how you can use the masks as well. You could create a whole background around your entire image by putting everything in place or you can just partially mask your image and um, add to this. You could add more flowers, make it a bigger like more full cluster if you wanted to by just selectively inking the stencils. But now I've got the complete floral cluster with I think an amped up stencil design and some really cool stripes that come out the back of it. For my final detail, again because this is all about adding details here, I found a coordinating reddish colored marker with a fine tip in my stash and I'm just dotting in a little bit of shading into those flower centers and again that just adds more depth right there in the pit of the flowers right in the center and then a few dots of highlight on what would be sort of the high part of the center, the flower center. And that will complete my gorgeous floral image. So I'm going to give you some still shots so you can see the color even better because I get it gets a little washed out on my video. But that is a look at this finished product, which I think turns out beautifully when you add a little extra dimension and shading with your different blending brushes. So I hope that gave you some great ideas. Thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe and hope to see you back real soon.